If you're looking for the ultimate beginner's guide to LEGO Fortnite, then rest easy because we have you covered here. We've been playing a ton of this open world survival game mode, so we're going to wrap together all of the tips, tricks, and juicy beginner things that we wish we knew sooner before playing ourselves. So let's save you a bunch of time and effort and jump into the guide, but hit the like button below if we do help you out here and comment any extra tips that you figured out so we can all learn as a community. First thing is first, you're going to need to select LEGO Fortnite as your mode and then create create your own world. Select create new world, pick a slot, and from here you will have the choice to play either survival mode or sandbox. Survival mode is like the classic experience where you gather, craft, and build to survive, and it's kind of like the main way to play the game. The sandbox mode is for people who want to experiment and build without needing to gather and craft stuff. So you can choose how you want to play, but we recommend starting in survival mode and not changing any of these options so you can play the game the way it was sort of intended. Once created, you will spawn in into the world without any items or gear in a grassland area, and now you must set out and get to work. But first, you should drop a little emote by pressing B on PC or the D-pad on controller. So now you're ready to start, you're going to need a bunch of resources to get building and crafting. Look for small rocks and sticks on the ground to collect. These will give you wood and granite, the two most common resources here that you will need a lot of. You can also punch down the thin trees as well as the bushes to get wood and vines, but not the thicker trees yet. There's also a farming trick that will go over soon, so you don't have to gather too much right away. Sometimes when you pick up the rocks on the floor, a small spider will be there and will start attacking you. Just punch this a couple of times and it will die, and you might just get some silk, which we will need later on. So if you actually encounter these spiders, it's a good thing and save that silk. Also, look out for berries and pumpkins. You'll have a green circle around the icon of your character. The notches in this is your hunger, and it will fill up green as you eat food, and you need to keep it topped up so you don't die, and you can also heal yourself with food. So as you're already gathering some wood and granite, gather the berries and pumpkins as well. The icon under your character is the temperature gauge. This will go up or down depending on how hot or cold it is, but in the grasslands area, you'll be fine for now. So after gathering some wood, granite, and some food, we now need to start thinking about building our first little home. You can unlock all kinds of new buildings and workbenches, so we'll want to get started. To begin with, find a nice area that you would like to build your first village, ideally somewhere that's open and flat in the grasslands. Place a campfire down first for three wood. This is great for when it gets cold and dark, but by placing this down, you will then unlock the simple shack and the crafting bench get building both of these nearby. The shack should go first with only six wood needed, and once you place it, it's very easy to build as each piece will snap into place as you move around and place them where they look like they should go. The crafting bench should then be placed inside the shack. This is because if you place it outside, when it eventually rains, you will not be able to use it. And it should only cost you three wood and five granite. Inside of the crafting bench, you can create a forest axe and a pickaxe. These are perfect for chopping down the bigger trees and mining out the bigger rocks. You could make these now because they're good to have, but we also have a farming trick that we'll show you in a second. After you finish making these, you will then unlock the bed, chest, and some other things like foundations, which will let us do our farming trick. First, place down a bed inside of your shack, which costs 10 wood. The bed is fantastic because it kind of acts like your spawn point and also is a place where you can rest to heal up your hearts if you take damage. Beds are also important for our village, which we'll get in later, so you will be making more of these beds. Now it's time to do a cool trick so you can get a ton of resources very quickly and early. After you finish building your shack, you will then unlock the wooden foundations. If you place one of these on the floor, and then another one on top that is offset like I do, and a third smaller one on top, you can then destroy the bottom foundation, and this will let you push it around. If you push this into trees and rocks, it will instantly break them to give you a bunch of resources very quickly and easy. And this seems to work on most things, and it's a really quick way to get stacks of wood and granite without having to run around and hit things over and over again. This will save you so much time, so definitely try this out, and hopefully they don't change this. 
Now after this you should have a nice chunk of resources saved up so we can do a load of crafting and building and get more serious. We can now place our village hub down which will cost 10 wood and 10 granite. This will create an area around the hub which will make it your own village. Things that you place like buildings and workbenches will build up our village rating. This will lead to us being able to upgrade the village with a resource cost per upgrade, but it will give a bunch of perks to us, like giving up to 5 in total NPC villagers a place to live, as well as jobs that we can assign them so they can gather resources for us, cook or refine, and more as you get higher and higher level. So, set up a bed for a villager and talk to a villager when they visit to recruit it to your village. You can then talk to them about jobs so they can go and gather for you or follow you and help you in combat. Now that you have a village set up, it's time to craft some essential gear to get you the best start before venturing out into the world. So, you will now need a lumber mill which costs 8 wood and 15 granite, but hopefully you have plenty of these resources from the trick that we showed you earlier. Place this down, preferably inside a building as again it means you can use it even when it's raining, so you might need to build another shack. In this you can refine your wood into planks and wooden rods. We will need both of these in the future, so right now I recommend creating 10 wooden rods and 15 planks. This might take a couple minutes as each one requires some time to be converted. Once this is completed though, you can then take the wooden rods to the crafting bench to make a short sword which will be a massive help in combat. If you can afford it, make an extra one just in case this breaks because all of your tools actually have a health bar that will go down the more you use them. But there's another cool trick that you can use to instantly repair all of your low durability tools. Place down a chest which costs some planks, and then put all of your almost broken tools inside of this chest. Then you want to attack the chest until it breaks. This will not only refund the cost of the chest so you will get your planks back without losing anything, but it will also drop all of the tools on the ground, and the tools will then be repaired to maximum durability for free. So now you know a little trick to repair all of your tools. A quick update guys, I've just tested this again as there's been an update while editing and unfortunately as you can see, this technique no longer works to repair your tools. So when things break, you will have to make them again. Next, I highly recommend you build a knight shield so you can block attacks. This requires some cord, so you will need to make the spinning wheel next, which costs 8 planks, 5 wooden rods, 5 wood, and 5 wolf claws. You should be able to get all of these resources from what we've explained except for the wolf claws. For these, I recommend getting your villager to follow you so they'll help you in combat. Then you want to go exploring around the grassland until you find a wolf. Use your sword to slash it and make sure to press control to dodge if it's going to attack you. This does a quick directional evade and will dodge their attack if you time it right. With your villager's help and your trusty sword, the wolf shouldn't be too hard to kill and you can always eat berries to recover some hearts if you need to. With the wolf defeated though, that will give you the wolf claws and then with the other items that you already have, you can build the spinning wheel to make that cord with vines which you can easily get from destroying the bushes all over the place. Now you can craft your shield and equip it in your offhand item slot so you're ready to take on the challenges of the world with a sword and shield. You may have already encountered some spiders while gathering resources and these can drop silk. We'll need this to create some silk thread at the spinning wheel. So farm some spiders and this will then unlock the health charm once you've created some silk thread. These charms give us more maximum hearts which is a massive bonus for survivability and they can be stacked together in all four gear slots. So to craft the common ones, you're going to need a total of 3 silk thread, 5 wolf claws and 3 bones each and remember these can stack so making multiple is good. We recommend making at least 2 or 3 of these so go and farm some spiders by breaking down bushes, some wolves by exploring the grassland areas and of course bones you're going to need to kill skeletons at night time which is pretty easy with your new sword and shield. Once you've gathered these items, you can then craft some of these charms to juice up your maximum hearts so now you have extra HP, your weapons, your tools and your trusty shield to get you started out in the world. Now you are ready to go and enjoy the rest of the game and explore, but you should also remember that your next goals will be to level up your crafting bench and village to unlock other types of workbenches so you can get crafting more powerful gear, tools, weapons and items. 
For your first crafting bench upgrade, you're going to need eight planks, which you can do quite easily now, but also three shells, which will come from the roller enemies that you can find by exploring the grasslands. After you have upgraded your crafting bench, you can then make the next higher tier of tools, including the uncommon forest axe, which will cost you wooden rods and bones. We have explained how you can get these, and it is important because you will need this axe in order to chop down knot root, which will then need to make the uncommon pickaxe. So, craft this axe and then go out into grassland caves which have this icon on the map. Inside of these caves you will find curled or knotted wood circles around the place which you can chop down with your brand new axe to get some knot wood allowing you to then refine this into rods so that you can craft the uncommon pickaxe which is then used to mine marble that is also found in those caves so you can start progressing further and further and upgrading your village. On a side note, make sure to look out for ruins in the wild as these often have chests in them with some extra free goodies for you. You can also follow the glowing rainbow bug that will sometimes appear and if you chase this it will lead you to a chest or other goodies so you can get some freebies. But now you're ready to adventure out into LEGO Fortnite as you're set up and ready to begin exploring the other biomes. If we helped you out, hit that like button down below and subscribe for more because we'll have you covered with daily gaming videos, guides and more.